This is part three of Ephesians 6, 10 to 13. Finally, be empowered, be strengthened, be mighty. In the Lord, not your own strength, but the miracle of being strengthened by the strength of another. In the Lord and in the strength of his might, put on. Now, this is where we start. This is how we experience this miracle of being strengthened in the Lord and with the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God. This is God's armor. When we wear it, we are wearing an armor from God, provided by God, empowered by God, that you may be able to stand. That's the goal here. The goal here. That's the goal of this text. To stand against the schemes of the devil. That's as far as we're going to go. Father, grant that we who are studying this sentence together now for the next few minutes will be made strong to stand. Stand against the schemes of the supernatural enemy that we all have, the devil who hates us and wants us down, not standing. God, make us strong. Deliver us from evil, I pray in Jesus' powerful, devil-defeating name. Amen. First thing to notice, we're putting on armor, which means we are being prepared for combat. There's just no getting away from this. I understand that warfare imagery, soldier imagery, combat imagery in the New Testament is not everybody's favorite imagery. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be your favorite. It's just true, <laughs> right? We are being fitted for combat here. We're not being fitted for games. That's another image in the New Testament to run a race. But this is war. And this is the enemy. And he's 10,000 times stronger than you are in yourself. We're not being made strong here merely to play games. We're not being made strong here merely to stand and make money, stand and get healthy, stand and be successful in the world. We're being made strong to stand and triumph over the devil who wants us not to stand. So if you're in a combat and you've got all kinds of armor on, if you fall down, and you can't get up because you're so laden with armor, you're done for. The horses are going to trample you. The enemy soldiers running by are going to thrust their swords into you. You've got to stand or you're gone. And that's life. That's the picture here, right? He, he's preparing us for combat. Now, let's acknowledge this. This word schemes is used one other time in the New Testament. It's right here in chapter 4. He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers to equip the saints. Now, this is different imagery than, than uh, armor, right? This is equipment for the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, of the knowledge of the Son of God to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now, those are the pieces of armor here, but that's not the imagery. It's not warfare here. It's what? So that we may no longer be children. This is the new, this is a different image, right? We are supposed to move from babies and immature and helpless to fullness of maturity. So the, the weapons here are unity of faith, knowledge of the Son of God, mature manhood, measure the stature of the fullness of Christ, no longer being children, so that what happens? No longer tossed to and fro by the waves 
and carried about by every wind of doctrine and human cunning by craftiness in deceitful schemes. That's the word. It's the only other time that this word back here, schemes of the devil, is used. And so deceitful schemes here are demonic schemes, but the devil's not mentioned here. Human cunning is mentioned here. False doctrines are mentioned here. And we're not pictured as um, soldiers putting on armor. We're pictured as children growing up. Grow up, Christian. Grow up. And he, he could say, stop being a civilian and be a soldier. But that's not the point here. The point here is stop being a child. Become mature. Understand in unity with others the faith. Get the knowledge of the Son of God and defeat this deceit and escape this cunning and stand. Right? It's, this is all the same idea, only it's not in warfare imagery like it is here. So my point there is, I remember when I was a pastor, I dealt with the tension between in the pulpit, will I be a champion and a hero and a warrior to lead the church into battle? Or will I be a compassionate, wise, tender, caring father? Will I be a brother? In other words, we have all these images in the New Testament, and they're all true. And I'm simply saying there are times for a father to be a warrior. There are times for a warrior to be a father. And the pastor has to be all of them appropriate to the situation. So here the imagery is, come on, Christians, let's suit up. We got combat to do. We got armor to put on men and women, boys and girls, old and young, every race, every class. We got an enemy who's supernatural. We've got armor provided by God Himself. The aim is to stand by escaping schemes. And these schemes are so subtle that the armor, which we're going to touch on soon, is perfectly suited for all of these schemes. Maybe one more thing to observe. You might say, well, look, if we have an enemy that is that supernatural, then I think we should just fold our arms, sit in our chair, wait for God to take him out. God's not going to do it that way. He is going to take him out, and he's going to take him out with you being empowered in the Lord, with the strength that God supplies, or the strength of his might. He's going to do it by suiting you up with armor. And you might say, look, I don't think we should do this. I don't think we should be the ones fighting the devil. I think God should fight the devil. And we should watch and then give him glory because he gets the victory while we watch. And it's just not, you can be wiser than the Bible if you want, but don't do it. It won't lead you anywhere good. He, God is going to defeat his enemy, and he's going to defeat his enemy with his people. That's what the text says. So put on the whole armor of God and get in the battle. Why might he do it that way? God means to glorify Jesus by our defeating the devil in the strength of Jesus. Isn't that it? Be empowered with the strength of the Lord so that when you put on the armor and defeat the devil, the Lord gets the glory. That's the, that's the strategy that God has. We might think it should be another way, but it's not going to be another way. Here's the picture of why that is so crucial. Here's First Peter. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Whoever speaks as one who speaks oracles of God, Whoever serves as one who serves by the strength that God supplies. Now that's the same as be empowered in the Lord in the strength of his might. So serve by the strength that God supplies. Why? In order that in everything God may be glorified. The giver of the strength gets the glory for the victory. To him be glory and dominion forever. So back here, you be empowered 
in the strength of the Lord's might so that when you defeat the schemes of the devil with the armor of God and stand, God gets the glory, the Lord gets the glory. That's why God ordains that we be in the battle. He means for us to share in the victory so that we are among those who give him the glory for the strength he gave us to defeat the devil. So now we're going to find next time that the devil has lots of servants. Right here. Next time.